So welcome guys into this lab, which is a scale and load balance your application. And we know from the previous classes or from lab five, the last thing we did was basically to create this scenario. We create a web server with a security group that is speak with a multi-AZ deployment of an RDS. Now we want to basically make this architecture beside it is highly available. We want it to be load balancing and auto scale so this means we are going to add application load balancer because this is a web server and we will add as well an auto scaler and then we will move the web server from the public subnet to the private subnet to give it more and extra layer of security so the first thing we need to do guys in this lab is to create an ami from the current ec2 that we have so if you look here we have our web server that we create in lab five and that web server is offering a demo application so that demo application is used by our end user and we have an rds as well and in the past we connect from this rds to from this web server to the rds so the first thing we need to do guys is in task one is basically to create an ami and that ami will be passed to the auto scaler so basically every machine created by the auto scaler will offer the same application that we can see here in uh, the web server so to create an ami select the web server itself go to action and then from action go to image and template and create an image we need to call this image the web server AMI and the description, which is the lab AMI AMI for web server. Now this is will take a few minutes, so I'm going to click on create and I will move to the next task. So in tasks two, we want to create a load balancer. And we say from the class that there is a three types of load balancer because we are load balancing our application, then we need to create an application load balancer. So click on create a load balancer. Select an application load balancer. Now, this application load balancer, as you see from the diagram, is going to be an internet facing because it will operate in the public subnet. So we'll call this a lab ELB. And it will be an IPv4. Now, in which VPC wants to operate? This will be operated in the lab VPC. In the lab VPC, we have two availability zone, 1A and 1B. Now this should be the public subnet one, and this one should be public subnet two, because we are saying that this is a internet facing load balancer. Now we need to remove the default security group from the security group drop down uh, box. We select the web security group, which means that load balancer is going to accept the traffic at port 80, and it will be forwarding it to this target group so we need to create a target group and this is will open a new tab for us now this target group is going to be called uh, it will be a choose a target group it will be an ec2 instance so we'll select instances the target group name it will be basically a lab a group and then we need to operate that target group in the lab vpc with http1 and it will send a health check via http as well and the last thing we need to do is to click uh, next now these are not going to be registered or available because this is the web server one and this is the bastion host we don't need any of them so we will click on a create a target group now go back to the load balancer page refreshed and this is now will show you the target group that we just created now the next step is to create a load balancer so once you click at this stage here you will find that you have created an application load balancer and a target group for that load balancer okay 
Now the next thing is to create a launch configuration and auto scaling a group. So we want to go to the launch configuration and we click on a create a launch configuration. That will be the lab config. Now which AMI? We are still waiting for our AMI to be ready. So as you can see that web server AMI, the one I just create, it is ready. You can verify this as well from going to instances and there is an AMI and this is the AMI I just create myself, which is a copy of the content of the EC2 that offers this application here. Now the instance type is going to be in, this example is going to be T3 micro. So I'm going to select T3 dot micro here and choose. Now we don't have any spot in instances or a profile role. We uh, only need to worry about the security group because this is offering us a web server. So we need to make sure we open uh, the uh, web security group. We are going to select the web security group. for the security group. And then we need to choose an existing key pair and we will choose the Vocarium key, click and acknowledge and then create. That we have now a lab configuration for the auto scaling. The next thing is to create basically an auto scaling group. You can select the lab configuration or you could go to auto scaling a group from this tab, both they will work. From action, just click on a create an auto scaling a group. We will call this a lab auto scaling a group. Click now next. Now this is will operate in the lab VPC. So make sure you are not selecting the default VPC. Now in which availability zone we need to select or to create those auto scaling a group. Now go back to the diagram, guys. Once you're auto scaling uh, in a practically or practicing and creating more EC2 instance, we want any EC2 instance created by the auto scaling group to be placed on the private subnet. We don't want it to be to place them here in the public subnet. We, so we need to be careful about our choice. So let's go now back and we select the private subnet one and the private subnet two and the click next so now the next step we need to attach it to a load balancer and we have an existing load balancer which is the lab elb so we need to select that and then we make sure that the elb is activated and then we have to enable a group metrics then click next the desired capacity is going to be two the minimum is two and the maximum is going to be six and now we need to uh, basically select the targeted group, which the target CPU utilization 60 for 300 seconds, which means one minute. Then no notification. For the tag, we need to put a tag name lab in instance, then click next, next and then create an auto scaling. The next thing you will see now the auto scaling will start to uh, basically put and create the desired capacity to make sure that we have two instances. So you could go now and see that the EC2 will have two instances under initialization. So if you go to the instances and refresh this page, you will see that there is a new instance created by the auto scaler called lab instance. Uh, one and two. You could now stop the web server just to make sure that the load balancer is not getting any traffic from uh, the web server. And now let's go and test the load balancer. So select the lo load balancer lab ELB, select the DNS name, and then put that DNS name into a new browser and la load the CPU test, which will basically create um, the demo application that we have. And that demo application, we can load test, which basically run a script on the web server to generate some CPU load. And then you can see from the auto scaling activity that it will start to create more EC2 instances to meet the, the, um, the demand. 
As you know that this uh, will get uh, all the information from CloudWatch. So if you go to the CloudWatch, you will find that there is a new alarm just raised in green. And that alarm is basically showing that the target uh, a group of the lab uh, auto scaling group is in OK status and the CPU utilization is greater than 60. So you could uh, keep monitoring between loading the test, close the page of the load balancer basically to check that there is a new uh, EC2 instances or deleting an EC2 instances when there is no load. So this is pretty much what we need to do in lab six, guys. Just keep it running for a few minutes and monitor the CloudWatch. And that's all for the Cloud Foundation class. Thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one.